Okay, here we are on our third invertebrate that we're going over, a major invertebrate um, phylum, and that is the flatworms. They are called flatworms because they are flat. And um, that flattened body means they have a really high surface area to volume ratio. So if you look at your handout, the question under 3a uh, is how do flatworms get the oxygen they need to every cell because they lack a circulatory system. So just, and, and that's true with cnidarians as well and also with sponges. So um, these are primitive enough organisms, animals, that they don't have these complicated organ systems like a circulatory system. And the truth for cnidarians and flatworms and sponges before them is that they have enough surface area um, that they can diffuse oxygen um, through their body to every single cell fast enough to be able to survive. That is something we could never do. We need to have our heart constantly um, beating and our respiratory system bringing in oxygen and then putting it into the circulatory system to travel all around our body. But these guys are wafer thin and so um, they can, diff the oxygen will just travel by diffusion, which is where molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration uh, throughout their bodies. There are many different kinds of flatworms. So some of them are parasitic, like this fluke over here, uh, which is basically this very flat um, slab of animal with a bunch of gonads and then this tapeworm which has a very different shape but is similar in that all of these little sort of segments that come off of the tapeworm are loaded with both eggs and sperm. They're often hermaphroditic and um, that helps them to um, get into any host and not have to find another say male or female. They just um, uh, new, new uh, babies can be formed even from their own segment and give rise to, um, uh, to new tapeworm adults. Okay and um, other flatworms are free living. This one is a marine flatworm, and this is kind of a fun image that shows two free living marine flatworms, um, penis fencing. So they both have penises, they are both hermaphroditic, and both of them are trying to jab the other with their sperm. And the flatworm who gets jabbed first absorbs the sperm through the skin, and they will be the mother. So, um, so as far as three examples of flatworms, you could say marine flatworms, flukes, and and tapeworms, which are parasitic. And then a fourth flatworm um, is called planaria. And you can find these in the American River. They are also free living, but they're more freshwater. And they can regenerate themselves if they are cut. So if you're not too squeamish, there's a video that shows them being cut um, and uh, regenerating. And it talks a little bit about the genes that make this possible. So we're going to pause here, have you watch that next video, and then uh, we will regroup to talk about nematodes.